Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm going to do my November wrap up, including my non-fiction November uh, final update and what I read. So we'll start with the non-fiction. I think I'm going to split, split my wrap ups into either weeks or depending on how many books I read or and, and then um, perhaps one every every week or one every two weeks and then split if there's a lot of non-fiction put non-fiction first and, do, and so on. So obviously the non-fiction first um, as we know non-fiction November. Thank you to Olive from A Book Olive and Non-Fit Books. I really enjoyed reading some books I have never read before and learning some new things. So the first book I read was The Keys of Egypt by Leslie and Roy Adkins. This is The Race to Read. The Hieroglyphs and tells the story of Thomas Young and Jean-Francois Champollion. Uh, Champollion was the man who actually did decipher those fantastic hieroglyphs. It's a fantastic book. I have mentioned this in my weekly wrap up for Nonfiction November. So if you want to go and check out one of those uh, videos, it would be in week one wrap up because it was uh, it was quite a nice book to read and it didn't take me too long. Secondly, I read Uncle Jack by Tony Williams with Humphrey Price. This is the story of a man named Tony Williams who believes that his great great uncle, or something along those lines, um, John Williams, or Sir John Williams, was Jack the Ripper. Sir John Williams most notable for founding the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth. An interesting read but not a convincing solution to the Ripper story. Again, this has been mentioned in one of my wrap-ups. One of the reasons I didn't read as many books this month, I think I finished nine, and one of the re reasons I didn't finish the Anne Frank book was because I was reading this. The Romanovs, nine, uh, 1613 to 1918 by Simon Sebag Montefiore. And as you can see, it's a brick of a book. It took me three and a half weeks to read this. Normally I read a book in a couple of days. This took so long because I have never read anything about Russian history, let alone the Russian royal family, the Romanos, and so it did slow me down big time. Obviously I knew a little bit about the Romanos, uh, or Romanos. I knew about Catherine the, Catherine the Great and Peter the Great. I knew a bit about what happened to Nicholas and Alexandra and their children in 1918. But I didn't know a lot of it. Um, so for me it was a whole new world opening up. I really enjoyed it and I would like to read some more Russian history. So Olive if you do watch this can you give me some recommendations on where to go with now because I do want to learn some more Russian history and politics and just Russia in general. So do if you, if you watch this please give me some book recommendations. I would really really appreciate it because I really enjoyed this book. I think I gave this one four out of five stars. I know there were a few mistakes in it that were picked up in other reviews that I've read online, but I did enjoy it. It's a beautiful book. So those are the non-fiction books I read. As I said um, in my Friday Reads, I am currently reading The uh, Roses from the Earth by Anne Frank by Caroline Lee. I will tell you more about that when I've actually finished it. So on to the non-fiction books. So I've read one, two, three, four four non-fiction last? No, no, I tell a lie. Six non-fiction, that's right, because I read a couple of e-books right at the beginning of the month and I've got notes on them here. So, so the first e-book I read was one that I know a lot of people love and my friend Julie recommended it and uh, recommend, me, blah, she recommended it and that was The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. I loved it. I, I absolutely really really enjoyed this story um, and Julie has advised me that the next one's even better. I couldn't wait to find out what was happening. I wanted to know more about all of the characters whether they were the good guys or the bad guys, why they were the way they were and I cannot wait to read the next one. However I am limiting myself. I'm not downloading or reading any more ebooks for the time being because my TBR physical books is currently teetering at over a hundred and I want to try and get that TBR down um, especially as I've got so many review books from Carlton Publishing and so on um, so what I want to do is I'm not going to actually read the next ones until I go on holiday in February um, but I will take both of them on holiday on my Kindle with me so I gave that one five out of five I loved it I really cannot wait to read the next one and, and they're not that expensive on Amazon, they're 99p, so I will be getting them very soon, but it's I've got to stop myself from reading them. Uh, the second ebook I read was one of those cosy mysteries, and that was Barbecue Bourbon and Bullets by M. E. E. Harmon. Now, this was a fun cosy mystery. 
I quite like cozy mysteries. I just find that they're not long enough for me. I like a good plot. I love character development and although these cozy mysteries are great for reading in my lunch break at work because I can leave it, pick it up and I've read it in two days. But I like a book where the characters really really develop. You learn about the the potential suspe suspects and witnesses and, and you don't really get that chance. But saying that I did enjoy this. I thought the dynamic between the two main characters of the book was very good and I thought the suspects were very good. I thought the, the, the murder was very good and the way the murderer concealed the weapon Obviously they found it in the end, but I thought it was very, very clever and all in all, a three out of five, nice, easy, fun read. Those are the only two one, two ebooks I read because I was taking my non-fiction to work. Oop, I've just pulled the thing out of my book. However, because I needed a break from all that heavy Russian non-fiction as much as I did enjoy it and I really did, I treated myself and read the third Harry Potter, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is my favourite so far. I absolutely love this. The characters are really growing. Harry's growing up and so is Hermione and Ron and they're developing their own characters and realising their limits and what they can and can't do. Oh, this is my favourite so far. I actually gave this one five out of five. I actually really, I like the idea of the night burst, oh, and the tunnels from Hogwarts into Hogsmeade. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and I can't wait now to move on to the next. Now, I haven't seen the film of Fantastic Beats and Where to Find Them because the other half isn't a big Harry Potter fan. There's something wrong with him. However, I will be either, probably not going to see it, but I will be getting it on DVD and I will be buying the script soon. Yeah, but don't tell it. Don't mention buying books to him. He'll go crazy. After that, I read um, Actual Reality by Cat Mantra. This one I was sent by, free from the publisher for a review um, uh, from G the Book Guild Publishing. I have reviewed this book. I will link it down below. I did enjoy it. I gave it five out of five stars. I thought it was a lovely children's book. I will want to read the next one. I do want to know what happens next. I want to see what he gets up to. I loved it and gave it five out of five. I finished one of my favourite trilogies of that I discovered this year thanks to Booktube. Yay Booktube! And that was I finally finished Miss Peregrine's trilogy. I read Library of Souls. I think I read this in one sitting. I couldn't sleep one night. I just sat there and read it. It was a weekend so I didn't care. Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs. Loved the way it all came together at the end. It all tied up really nice and neatly. Um, loved the way that they all got together at the end in America and the 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 yeah, I'm not going to tell you because that would spoil it. But yeah, it's really good. Read it. And I do understand, according to Jessie the Reader, there will be a new trilogy of Miss Peregrine's type stories of peculiardom in the future. So come on, Ransom. I can't wait. I love it. Um, I do have Tales of the Peculiar to read yet. So I'm looking forward to reading that because that looks really fun. But as a photographer and somebody who loves photography books, for me, I did love, I do love the the vintage photographs and the, uh, you know that are in the books I just I just love photographs I am the sort of person that if you said do you want to see my holiday snaps would go yes please because I am like that I, I looked after my sister's house once when she was on holiday and I, I just sat there and looked through all of her photo albums she's my half sister but she's my sister don't, don't, we don't worry about that nonsense where I come from so I just love photographs you know just leave me with your photo album I will be happy there for so yes, I gave this one, I think I gave this one five out of five as well. Yes, five out of five, I believe. I love it. And finally, I read book six in the Chronicles of St. Mary by Jodie Taylor. That's what could possibly go wrong. I will admit, I gave this four out of five stars because for me the ending was, I was a bit disappointed. Um, but that's not going to stop me reading the next one because I want to know how they're going to deal with the situation at the end of this book in the next couple of books. I'm sure it will all resolve itself and be fine. But there were places in this book where I laughed out loud. Oh, I was, I just, it was just belly laughs through this, some of this book. Some of this book was absolutely hysterical. Um, in this one, Maxwell is um, on light duties because of what happened in the previous book. She's being chief training officer. She's got five new recruits and she's training them. And um, they get to visit Joan of Arc and watch her burn, charming, um, kidnap a baby mammoth and bring it back to the present day. 
meet um, some Stone Age hunters, they bomb a rat, and um, Richard III comes into it as well. Um, it was hysterical. This is, uh, apart from the ending, I think this is one of my favourites so far. I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to read the next one. I will be reading the next one soon. I usually try and I've eat them out to one a month since June. The only problem is now I've got to wait till I think book eight comes out. But that's, that is what it is. I have to put up with that. But yes, I really did enjoy this. I do love Jodie Taylor's style of writing. I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going to go next with Maxwell and Leon and you know, see what happens. Um, they have changed the design of the covers, apparently, and they're very bright now. I actually like this more muted style, but uh, hey, I'm not the designer. They're very, very colourful, to say give it a very retro look, but I think this looks more historical, like a, a volume of historical works. But they haven't changed the overall design, they've still got the swirly writing and the, the design, they've just made them really bright. So I'm a bit annoyed now that book eight won't match the rest of them. Sorry, it's upside down, but there we go. I'll still read it, it just won't match, but there you go. So that is what I read in November. If you've read any of these books and want to have a discussion, please do leave some comments. If you've read anything you think I should be reading based on the books here, please let me know because I'm always open to um, recommendations and of course over time <laughs> money for books I'm only joking I'm going on holiday um, but yeah so yeah please do give me some recommendations I'm always looking for new books to read um, whether it's fiction or non-fiction poetry short story collections plays anything just leave me some recommendations I'll see you all soon bye